I don't know what your stress levels are right now, given the fact that convention is day after tomorrow, given that everything that's going on in the life of our country, the way people are responding to all of that, the experience of loss uh, that we are experiencing. I don't think we have ever had a longer immemorial list than Saturday in terms of the number of clergy who have died over the course of this past year. We keep hoping that this was the last one and we've continued to add, in fact, more and more and more. It is critically important that in the midst of that kind of stress and tension that we take heed to what the liturgy and the scripture itself is inviting us into, which is we're inviting, God, the whole service is inviting us into a place of peace. Not peace in terms of the absence of outer conflict, but instead peace in terms of what's happening inside of here in the face of the conflict. I cannot always change my circumstances. Uh, I have to be responsible and be involved and should be. But I certainly have the capacity to be able to make the decision to come into the presence of God, exhale, and be reminded of eternity that is far bigger than me. Know that, and that's exactly what Hebrews is trying to do this morning. I mean, remember, these are persecuted people to whom this letter is written. These are people who were Jews, converted to Christianity, and are under extraordinary pressure to give up Christianity and go back to Judaism because Judaism was not under suspicion as a kind of political anarchy. We don't know what they're doing over there, kind of religion in the face of their political leaders. Christianity, on the other hand, was all of those things and more. And so what the writer is trying to say to them, the whole book of Hebrews, in fact, is meant to be, in essence, an argument for not just the superiority of what God has given us in Jesus as opposed to what they knew under the Old Covenant, but to speak in very personal terms about the impact this faith has on who we are as human beings, which is why the contrast in the letter. On the other hand, what happened when the law was given? Everybody was just terrified. Even Moses says, I am trembling with fear. By contrast, the writer says, but you've come to a different place. But the interesting thing about this is that while Moses went to a specific place called Horeb, Sinai, the writer here says, you have not come to something that can be touched. Meaning, you're coming into a reality that is in fact bigger and greater than anything that we know in the created order. In other words, to say we're coming to something that cannot be touched is not an argument from less than, just the opposite. It is an argument for more. That no matter where we are on the planet, no matter what's happening in terms of our circumstances, it is still true that where we are is in the city of the living God. Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, innumerable angels, and on and on it goes. In other words, my context for living as a Christian is therefore with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. No matter where I am, whether it's in the Walgreens, whether it's in traffic, whether it's wrestling with people that I'm having a hard time with, all of that is a reminder to say that I operate, that you and I as Christians operate from an entirely different reality. Now that takes work to sort of exhale, to remind ourselves, to swing back into that place of stress, lessness, as opposed to the place of fear that is the constant reminder of uh, what am I subject to? I'm subject to not good enough. I'm subject to not being as perfect as I ought to be. Subject to the judgment of God for not being as perfect as I ought to be. Subject to all kinds of whims and the flows of fates and nature and all of that sort of thing. He's, what the writer is saying is, no, you're in a different place. You are not subject to those things. 
You have come to something that's greater than anything that you have ever known. And it cannot be touched, but it is in fact pervasive throughout the universe. It's not tied to location. It's only tied to where Jesus is. And He is everywhere. Now, I don't know about you, but even today, I sort of have this routine. I put the vestments on, and I go over there to the room right next to us, the boardroom, and as you all are sitting there gathering, I have to go, and do something that Laurie and I used to do with our kids. Helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, belt of truth, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It is a reminder of my eternal context. And that, even though I can't see any of that armor, I know that's what I've been clothed with. In other words, I'm really not adding something to what is already there. I'm actually acknowledging that which God has gifted me. And that's what we do. Even in the Collect for Purity, to you, all hearts are open, all desires known. From you, no secrets are hid. I am in the presence of God who knows every fiber of my being. Even when I'm at my absolute worst. So it is that into which we have been invited. I think it's providential, even a convention on Saturday, that the closing anthem that wraps it all up is, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's again a visible reminder that in the midst of extraordinary uncertainty, we are clothed. We are located in the very mercy of the heavenly Jerusalem, wherever we are. It's a challenge because it challenges my understanding that it's easy to say God is in control when things are going the way I want. It's not so easy to say God is in control when things aren't going the way I want. And therefore I'm convicted of my own idolatry, of assuming that what I want is always the will of God. But it's not left me there. In fact, it's inviting me into a deeper place of mercy where I'm with and under the authority of one who for my good I cannot control. For my good. And that to, to relax and trust in his goodness even in the midst of high challenges is the invitation that we have been given. So thank God we're not in the place of the recipient of the book of Hebrews. We're not having jobs lost, arrests, homes confiscated, all of those kinds of things that can happen to people who serve under an authority that is opposed to Christianity, despite what QAnon might be telling us. But instead, we are under the authority of the very heavenly Jerusalem and the blood of Jesus, which speaks a better covenant than the accusing blood of Abel. We are at peace. And it is into that that we are invited not just to go, but to live. And honestly, if that's all the reminder I get out of this, it's more than enough. Because He is sufficient. So I don't have to be. And that I can trust in him. Amen.